Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. Today I have a really fun card project featuring a whole slew of techniques and new products from Pinkfresh Studio. This is a little advanced for me, but as you can see, it doesn't suck. That video is coming up next. Here's a look at the products I'll be using today from Pinkfresh Studio, and this is called Circle Florals. And the thing that's so cool about this is this piece is together. There is a die to cut that out. There are dies for the greetings. And something that I love is a layered stencil to help me color my blooms. So these are the basics. I thought today that I would make some blue flowers with these beautiful colors. And then I pulled in some greens as well for the greenery. So let me get some paper so that we can stamp out our florals and then proceed to stencil on some color. I'm gonna just put this down and try very hard not to alter the stamp because I want it to preserve its shape so that I suppose I could have done the die cut first, but we're gonna, we're gonna roll the dice here and we're gonna go ahead and stamp this out, okay? So let's get you there. I'm gonna rub this with my hand to prime it just a little bit because I haven't used this before, as is the case with so many stamps that I show here on my channel. I'm going to ink up with Memento Tuxedo Black. Go ahead and get that going. It'll probably take a few stampings to get it down. Bring that down, make sure it's in the corner, and get my stamp press and transfer. Let's see how that transferred. Oh, that looks really good, actually. Oh, look at me. All right, you never know. Never say never. But I'm gonna do it one more time, just for all that extra little detail. Again, Misty hasn't moved. We transfer. And I'm gonna leave this stamp in the Misty in case, just in case, I decide that I want to come back and stamp it again after I've stenciled. I probably won't, but I'm going to just leave it in case. I've, I've started doing that more and more. Just leave the stamp in the Misty, and here I'm just giving it a nice quick clean with my scrubber and some Simon Says Stamp Ultra Clean Spray. All right, let's get set up to stencil. I'm going to line this up because I've made just a random stamp on a bigger piece of paper. It's gonna take me a second to get it lined up, but even if it's not perfect, I think it's still gonna be great. But I'm not I'm having issues here. Let me maybe like, let's tape that. I'm not sure what I was using last time most of that deeper color off. This is how I clean my brushes. I don't I don't get too weirded out about having it perfectly clean. I just try to rub it until most of it's coming off. That looks good enough. Okay, and I'll grab a little scrap here because I want to see what this color looks like, the sky blue. Oh, that's very pretty. Okay, so our first layer for flowers tap a little off is the sky blue. And I'm gonna bring this in lightly into each flower opening. Not putting too much pressure on, I just want this to be a really light wash of the color. And again, if I spill into here, it does not matter because we're die cutting this. Look at that, isn't that nice? All right, very pretty. Ooh, I like that color. All right, that's layer one. Okay. And moving on to stencil two. And again, we're gonna figure out the placement. Okay, that looks pretty good. And tape and tape. 
just to hold it. Now I will bring in Summer Shower. Load up my brush, tap a little off so you can see that's a little deeper, and we'll come in. And I'm not going as light with this color because I want that little extra bit of detail in there with the flowers. I want that variation. And you can see the depth is starting to form. Actually, I could come in a little bit, couldn't I? There we go. All right, set that aside. Line and oh, that that came together very quickly. Little tape, and I have one on my arm. We'll just do that too over here, just to hold that in place. And I will get my third color. The darkest color, this is Seaside. Okay. Ooh, that's pretty. Seaside, coming in. And that will just give us a little more depth to our flowers that up and now the flowers have three layers of color dimension next to add the green I've got fresh pear for my first layer of the greenery and brought in that stencil we're just gonna layer on the fresh pear oh some of my hair is in there fresh pair and my hair. And of course, you can also stencil in some of the words, which is kind of cool that they've added those in the open space of the stencil. So that's fresh pair. Now let's get my hair out of there. And we will bring in the final stencil for the next and final color. Just tape to hold that in place. And I will bring in Grassy Knoll. I guess I could, well, I can't really slide that up now. We're, we're committed to our location. <laughs> oh, it's going to be fine. This is the Grassy Knoll. All right. No need to wipe down the brush because we're just going with another green. And now we have ink blended and colored in our gorgeous floral wreath. So except for me being out a little bit there, everything else looks pretty close. I'm going to go ahead and get the die placed on here. I'm gonna go ahead and run that through my die cut machine. All right, and what we have here are one floral fr frame, <laughs> one, try to say that five times fast, floral frames. Ooh, and I even got a little bonus flower <laughs> right there. I also have, let's see, a few little holes to poke out. And this is going to fit beautifully around the circle that I'm going to create next for my greeting. All right. Moving on, I'm going to take this stamp. I absolutely love this. You're amazing. Don't let anyone tell you differently. And I think I'm just gonna stamp it in black ink. Now, the dies in this large set also cut out the stenciled words if you wanted to stencil and cut out. But again, I'm just going to stamp. And I have the coordinating die for that from the set. In the corner, pick this up and give that a little prime and then we'll just stamp it with the same black ink. Okay. Bring that down and press. It's just a beautiful typography. Oh, I think that's lovely. I'm gonna stamp it one more time. Get it nice and inky. And press. 
get my sleeve and my ink. I think that looks beautiful. All right, let me get the die and we'll cut this out. I decided to cut a template out of some of my cheap copy paper because I want to make sure that I am getting this cut correctly around the edges, top to bottom. I'm not as worried about that inside bit. In fact, I could even, oh heck, I could even cut that out because all I'm looking for here is the placement. And when you make a little template, it allows you to basically frame out and see where you're cutting. And then you just go tape, tape, hold it into place. Then I can take this little die. I'm not, again, not too worried about those uh, inside parts. I'm more worried about the outside parts. So we're just gonna, just gonna kind of lock it into place like that. And then tape that and tape down here, and I think that's gonna give me the best cut, so I'll go ahead and run that through. All right, let's see. Did we get a good cut? It's probably gonna be just fine. Popping you out, it did go all the way through. All right, let's just remove our template. Oh yeah, that looks really good. And then gently pop. Come on now, come on, come on, calf, get it out. You want to be gentle, right? We don't want to, we don't want to muck it up. Oh, I love it. There we go. Oh, come here. Look at that. Careful. Now that, my friends, is a perfectly cut. Well, it's a little, no, you know what? It's going to be great. <laughs> We're moving on. I also have coordinating cuts and hot foil plates in nested circles that are designed to go together. Now, I have an idea. I would like to foil one of these in silver, and then I would like to try to cut it out and have that be kind of the centerpiece that holds everything together. So let me get set up for some hot foiling. So I'm going to try to keep this to minimal drama. Do you know what I mean? Because I <laughs> Let's just say I have some drama when it comes to foiling, which is like I hardly ever get it right. But all I'm going to do, I've got a piece of matte, no, it doesn't go that way, pretty side, pretty side to pretty side. I'm just doing a circle. So I think what I'll do is tape this into place, tape like that. Then as soon as this goes green, then I'll put this on the platform, right? Isn't that how it goes? I think it does. Bear with me. Machine is warm. I'm going to take this little friend, pop it down. <laughs> I'm gonna put on my plates. Uh, I don't know if it matters. I, I, I don't know if this matters. We're gonna go like this and hit the timer, okay? And let that go. Then I'll bring my machine in, my spell binders, and we'll wait. The light has turned green. I'm disengaging. I am placing it on the platform. And I'm going to run this through one time only. One time. One time only. All the way. There we go. Beautiful. And now, as this is coming out, I need to do a little, little shuffle there because I don't quite have all the room in the world. All right, take you off. Oh, nice and warm. Take you off, okay. Got my old tool here, lifting that up. I see a silver line and I'm thinking that I got it. Oh, look at that. It's perfect. Victory is mine. Oh my gosh, I did it. I'm a foiling, I'm a foiling phenom. I'm just gonna say it. All right. Let me get this cleared out and I will grab the dies to cut out my circle. So I'm going to tape one to the inside like this. And I'm thinking that will be just fine. Even if it's not 100% perfect, I think we're going to be okay. And then take one on the outside. Oh, this is fun. And again, hold that in place tape that, I'm gonna cut that out. All right, I ran that through my other machine, my Gemini Junior. I don't wanna 
I don't want to do anything untoward with the tape. I just want to see if I did a decent job. Well, you know what? All you have to do is go like that. Hey, look at that pretty little shiny ring. Oh, that's so cute. Okay, so these are the elements for my card, but I think what I want to do, I want to have a little dimension. So let me get some foam, you know, let me get some foam going here and then we can build our card. Before I proceed, I have an idea. I'm bringing this back. Now, oh, there's more hair. Kathy, Kathy, stop shedding. Okay. I like to do 3D embossing on this machine. I just know it better. It just works better for me. And I trimmed a panel down to be five inches by, no, four and a quarter, no, four inches by five and a quarter. I'm going to put a little leafy texture with this pretty little embossing folder that I have. And it doesn't really matter, you know, however it goes on, it goes on. I have the universal plates and the sandwich is the platform base A, the embossing folder, the 3D embossing folder with the paper and adapter plate D. Okay, so we're gonna, and the spine is going in. So let's run this through to impress some texture. I may not use this, but I thought I wanted it as an option. Oh, that was aggressive. All right, so I'll show you what I have here. This may become the base for my card, at least a panel to build everything on. Let me set this aside and I'm going to get some cardstock prepped for a note card. This is 11 inches by four and a quarter. And again, it's the Nina Solar White that I've used for the whole project. So I'm gonna score it right at five and a half. Like that. And I'll go ahead and fold this down and give it a press with my Teflon bone folder. Now I need to get some foam squares and a few items so that I can build up the card. So here's something that I'm thinking, I wanted it to be this way, but I think my circle is gonna be too big. I think going top and bottom would be very nice and having just that little extra texture could be fun. So let's take these off and I've got foam tape on the back here. So I'll just pop this panel onto the note card base like that, okay? What I'm going to do, I'm actually just gonna tape this into place so it doesn't shift because I need to figure out how I'm going to pop this up. And I feel like what could be very cute is just to take some of these thin foam strips from Waffle Flower Crafts. Let me see here if I can just do a, just, you know, kind of work my way around. They do curve, right? So it would give me just that little bit of, I don't know, dimension. And then I'm just gonna take a few little pieces, right? And just sort of, oh wait, just sort of work my way around like this. Take these backers off, like that. Now when it comes to doing things like this, it, for me, it's a, this is a bit of a crapshoot. I don't know construction wise if what I want to do is going to work, but we're gonna, you know, we're gonna try. This has some dimension and what I want to do is I want to frame right here so that I can't really see the florals underneath. Yeah, I can kind of see them, but that's fine. How about like that? Yeah, we're, we're, we're I should have done a little liquid, but I think we're gonna be okay. Okay, so you got that. We're gonna come down and we're gonna flip it. I need to stand up over this one too because that one is gonna go right there, okay? Pick that up like that. So now I've created a dimensional frame and all I have to do on the back here, I think, oh my gosh, let's take a little liquid glue, okay? All over this guy, right? Just to give that its way to hold down this in here, okay? I don't know, this is crazy. It's a little wild, but I'm excited about this. Okay, and maybe like a little here, just so that we have some wiggle room, like that, okay? <laughs> oh my gosh. And now we're gonna place this friend down right onto the note card, top and bottom, 
side to side, close as we can get it, and drop, drop. Ooh, I think that looks good. And press. Now, I'm gonna take my little, isn't this pretty? It says, share handmade kindness. It's just a really heavy block. It's made out of glass. And while that's adhering, I'm gonna put a little foam on the back of this friend. Okay, I did a little, a little foam, <laughs> foam strip surgery. And this now has, isn't that fun? I mean, oh my goodness. Okay, and then I think what I'm gonna do is just pop that right in the center. It doesn't, I love the little bit of extra texture with the tone on tone. I'm telling you, any kind of embossing stencil that you might have in your stash, don't, don't let them get dusty, you know, because they're really nice for, look at how tiny that is. I don't even know if I can get this off. There we go. They're really nice for something like this where all you're doing is just adding a little bit of texture, a little bit of visual interest, kind of steps it up a little in a, in a way that is so easy, right? I'm going to take up watchmaking and repair next. Yeah, watch repair because that would be great. I actually think it would be wonderful to get a little spyglass type thing for my eyes because then I think my life would exponentially improve. Okay, we're ready. I'm going to go ahead and just put my liquid glue on for a tiny bit of float time. Not too much, just enough. And I think I have enough foam on here to support the greeting. All right. And into the center there we go. Look how nicely that fits in there. I think that is just lovely. Is that straight? It is. You're amazing. Don't let anyone tell you differently. Oh, now I do have one little extra flower. You know what? It's just calling to be put right there. I love it. We're going to do it. One little baby. I think that's very cute. You could you could do more of these, of course, and just you know die cut them out. But I think I think this is very cute. And you know I think I think I'm gonna have to put a little shine on here too. But just that little bit of repetition that is so fun. Okay, it is clean and simple in execution, right? So it's not like you're. But but it took a little while to get there. Let me get some sequins. To finish this off, I don't want anything out here. I'm just going to put three below and three. Well, now I'm starting to, down. okay, here we go. You gotta go there. I guess I do need a larger one and that's just me. I like my larger sequin and I will just tuck that right there. That way, oh, I don't want it that far in though. That way we get that little bit of size. <laughs> Come on now. Oh gosh. We're, doctor, yes. You've got a retreat. There we go. Okay. I want that to tuck under a little, but not too much. So I am going to, I'll do that as we begin the process. Okay. So five sequins, a nice odd number, all contained in our beautiful silvery circle. All right, a little glue and boop. Now, boop and boop. So it tucks just a little like that, like that. And then this friend here, boop, and one more here. Boop, and that is the finished card project. This is fancy. I don't know, is it me? Is it just me? This is fancy. I mean, we got, we got a metallic circle. We got a beautifully colored and stenciled bit of blue florals and greens. You're amazing. We have that wonderful floral texture, which kind of just picks up from the greenery. I don't know. I'm feeling myself right now. So I hope this inspires you to get excited when you finish a card project. You can find links to all of the products I used in today's video in the YouTube description box. I always appreciate when you shop with my links, so be sure to check those out. If you're not a subscriber, please become one today and I will see you back here with another card project soon. 
To see a few more card projects featuring fun products from Pinkfresh Studio, check out the two thumbnails I have for you below, and I'll see you in those videos.